All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us for today's live uh, webinar presentation on rethinking e-learning for fleet safety. We've got a lot to cover today. We promise to keep this under 30 minutes, so we will move right along. Uh, just to put a face to a, a name, I'm Rich Sordahl, and I'm responsible for marketing at Drivers Alert. Many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with Drivers Alert in the context of the How Am I Driving decal-based driver observation program. It was the genesis of the company uh, back in 1989 when our uh, founders uh, were observing that other companies, uh, such as this one in this example, were running How's My Driving programs uh, in-house and uh, realized that there could be some efficiencies that they could develop and uh, provide some professional services that would enhance and provide value to these companies that are trying to improve driver behavior. But in keeping with that innovation over these 27 years of our company's existence, we've also done about many other things in the uh, innovation category, including creating the first closed-loop corrective action process that actually improves driver behavior using e-learning, as opposed to just uh, identifying and documenting that unsafe behavior. Uh, we've also created a unique safety-based application for vehicle telematics, which focuses more on the driver as opposed to the vehicle. Uh, and at Drivers Alert, we do believe that the driver is the biggest variable when it comes to fleet safety. We've also been spending uh, quite a bit of time working on a, a, a project to release a robust motor vehicle record monitoring solution, which goes, which goes beyond the um, minimum mandate from the DOT of doing your once a year MVR pull. And that's coming out very soon, and we, we're very proud of this, and we think it is the best now in the MVR monitoring industry. But most importantly today, what we're here to talk about is uh, next generation e-learning, some of the things that we've uh, seen over the years and what we have done to create what we think is now the best solution for e-learning uh, in safety. And beyond just the innovation theme, just our resume to give a, a little bit of background on where we've been and what we do. Uh, we have 1,500 clients currently with 350,000 vehicles uh, under contract being monitored. That translates into millions and millions, literally, of documented unsafe events that, that we've been able to amass and learn over the years. We also have 100 plus years of combined e-learning experience on staff here, and that includes our subject matter expert, Dr. Ron Kirsch, who has been in the occupational uh, health and safety industry now for more than 30 years. And we're also a trusted partner for many insurance companies. So really, specifically, why, why are we here today? Well, e-learning, we believe, has gotten stale. Uh, most companies are still offering dated content using old technology that has created many headaches and issues for the learner. Uh, many companies or providers actually call their content new, and in fact, it's simply repurposed content. Uh, also, research shows in uh, one study that fleets uh, just aren't embracing training, uh, actually 13% uh, to be exact. Uh, we think that's just uh, too low, and we're going to show you exactly why uh, we can do something to help you change that. Also, e-learning achieves what other tools fail, and that is closing that loop in driver improvement, where it gives you consistent uh, messaging so that you can actually take your documented, identified unsafe event and turn them around so that you can send that driver back out onto the road, a safer driver. And all you will hear uh, throughout this presentation of recurring theme that we're really here to help everyone wreck fewer vehicles and hurt fewer people. That is our mission. So today's goal is to kind of lay out a roadmap for you. Um, Paul is going to show you why e-learning is essential for fleets today in 2016, and then he's going to cover uh, the cost of safety and give you kind of an idea of what we're talking about uh, from bent metal to, to litigation. He's going to explain what's new about today's next generation e-learning and give you a little insight into what Drivers Alert has learned over the 27 years in dealing with our clients and then introduce our new learning and talk about some of the differences and, and what you can do with those uh, today. And then he'll open it up to questions using the online chat feature and then delve into a demo of one of our uh, courses. So with that said, Paul Murray, has been with Drivers Alert for several years now. He serves as our resident spokesperson on all things related to fleet safety management. Having personally worked with hundreds of companies, he understands firsthand what it takes to create fleet safety programs that, as we said, wreck fewer vehicles and hurt fewer people. 
Paul often visits clients and conducts media interviews and speaks at industry conferences. And his high level of engagement with the market and industry has directly led to many product innovations and enhancements while at Drivers Alert. So with all that said, I'll turn it over to Paul Murray. Paul? Hey, thanks, Rich. Let me grab controls back from you here. And then lastly, ensure that you can see my screen. Perfect. So why are we here? Let's start with the obvious. Today, we all know driving a vehicle is dangerous. But what I get you didn't know is across most age groups, vehicle collisions are either number one or two for a cause of fatalities. Uh, vehicle collisions are the leading cause of workplace fatalities in the US, accounting for just over 22% of all workplace deaths. And lastly, unfortunately, three workers are killed each day while driving, riding in, or operating a motor vehicle. Believe it or not, then we go out and we add additional activities and distractions on top of it as well. Now let's translate this to the fleet world. 20% of an accident rate, the percentage of fleet vehicles that will be involved in an accident annually. Now, what manager would ever accept a 20% defect rate? What consumer would ever accept a 20% defect rate? Nobody. 100% unacceptable. Unfortunately, though, today's market sees, and some people say, hey, it's cheaper to pay out claims than implement a safety program. 40% of fleet accidents are preventable accidents resulting from driver negligence. But with that said in mind, many still think safety happens by accident or think, hey, it's a cost of doing business. They don't see it as a investment. They still see it as an expense. This is just an ad I saw on the way to the airport last year in regards to safety doesn't happen by accident. But Drivers Alert believes that even the most injuries are preventable, including ones where you aren't at fault, such as improved defensive driving, better training on how to operate a motor vehicle or better training on you know ergonomics etc and believe it or not 93 percent of vehicle accidents are caused by human error not only is safety not an accident but the way someone drives is the most predictive risk factor driver behavior is more than 200 percent more predictive than any fleet insurance cost claim or other factor and a driver exhibiting a higher risk factor, like speeding, unsafe lane change, these folks have insurance claim costs that are between two and a half and three times higher than a driver demonstrating a lower risk behavior. But here's what happens when you truly get serious about safety. For someone that has a formalized safety program, they range about 13% of an at risk for an accident. Now, if you don't have a formal safety program, you more than double that number to 25%. A formalized safety policy is shown to reduce rates of vehicle accidents and personal injuries, and you often qualify for discounted insurance rates. And for larger fleets, such discounts and savings more than offset the cost of the program, materials, and administration. Again, going back to the investment, not the expense. But unfortunately, a lot of fleets still have a short-term mentality. Safety professionals often fight with a short-term mentality because fleet still drives the purchase. Again, those rolling assets are typically the most expensive piece of equipment an organization has. And anything related to fleet, like MPG, idle times, engine diagnostics, route optimization, those are what comes first. And then we say, hey, you know what, we'll look at accidents tomorrow and then on Friday, we'll look at it Monday. And then on Monday, we'll look at it Tuesday. But unfortunately, accidents are not in the day-to-day -day mindset. They get neglected, and then they lead to big money tomorrow. And in fact, accidents represent about a 14.2% uh, chunk of a fleet's overall expense budget. So it's not insignificant at all by any means. Driver safety and vehicle efficiency are definitely not mutually exclusive. In fact, safer drivers improve miles per gallon by as much as 33%. They're not speeding, they're not slamming on the gas, they're not jockeying for position. 
and 30% of improved fuel economy or miles per gallon comes from reducing speeding, acceleration, and hard braking. So as Rich referenced, we've got some goals throughout the presentation today. He touched on the first. We're going to look at the cost of safety. But what are the costs of safety? Things like bent metal. A little fender bender can cost a employer almost $17,000. A non-fatal injury vehicle accident can cost an employer on average almost $77,000. Asset downtime, lost time and productivity. We all know those higher insurance uh, insurance premiums, or if you have a frequency or a severity problem that gets as large, you may be dropped from coverage. And lastly, lawsuits. As we look at lawsuits, what can you be sued for? I know there's that lovely website, whocanisue.com. But as we look at it, damage to vehicles, physical injuries, pain and suffering, lost earnings, and then again, those punitive damages. And we see punitive damages like Tracy Morgan and Walmart. They settled outside of court. I'm sure that dollar amount was punitive. Over a million dollars for negligence, case verdicts, and settlements, and $6 million average for wrongful death. Today, unfortunately, employers are being held liable up to $25 million for employee crashes, even if an employee is using a hands-free device and think they're not distracted. But with all of this said, where is the training in fleet safety? Companies have been polled and only about 13% of fleets employ some variation of in-house or outside source training program. It's a pretty low statistic. Again, in continuing with our goals, we want to explain what's new about today's next generation e-learning. Well, if we take a quick look in the past, all the way back to the early 90s, some reasons why training may not be widely adopted in fleet is due to the history. But again, the main idea or main focus is the right side, 2016, where are we today? Affordable training that can be very customized, HTML5, which ties into that fourth bullet down there, mobile delivery. Get training to an employee where he or she is. It's all cloud hosted. So you don't have to worry about your servers being updated, making sure that if you make a change, it all will flow down. We handle all of that. And then lastly, the customizability of a training course, it's all database driven. So we can make changes very quickly and very cost effectively to deliver training that hits the mark exactly for your organization. Kind of going back to the goals, what have we learned in 27 years when we talk to our clients? Now again, what our clients are saying who do employ some kind of training. They're tired of taking the same course. They've got employees that they've found even providing cheat sheets of answers because again, the courses aren't regularly updated. They're too long. Learning wastes a employee's time with non-essential information or they know, okay, it's a 45 minute course. Is it gonna take me you know, a certain amount of time? I should be out there on the road. Content's way too broad. It's not detailed enough to be practically significant. It's not hitting the nail on the head. And then the course isn't specific to the work environment. It needs customizability. What can we add in? How can we make the employee look at the training and have it stick? Here are some employee uh, reasons why they don't, I'm sorry, uh, e-learning myths that we hear. Offering e-learning is all you need. People think that you simply just check the box. That's good enough. People think it has to always be fun. Now, I'm sure we'd all like our training to be full of joy, but you have to be aware of gimmicky tools such as gamification that can unnecessarily waste an employee's time. Plus, if you're wasting an employee's time, they lose focus on the training, their attention span drops significantly. People also think that e-learning courses are substitutes for classroom training. Each person learns differently. With that being said, e-learning requires a unique set of instructional design skills, knowledge of content delivery mediums, and a strong grasp of how people learn in a self-paced environment. And then lastly, that employees hate e-learning. Actually, employees don't hate e-learning at all. They just hate bad e-learning. 
And why is that? Let's take a, a step further. What's really going on here? What is bad e-learning? Well, the value's got to be evident. The knowledge is relevant, required to do a job. And why am I taking this e-learning course or what am I going to learn from it? The instructional design or ID is poor. Good ID doesn't happen by accident. It's got to be engaging. Irrelevant content wastes people's time with training that misses the mark. And then they see in the future, if they've got to take an e-learning course, they think it's all going to be the same. Inconvenient training. It can't be taken on a tablet, for instance. It's got to be accessible when and where an employee needs it. But in 2016, change has truly arrived. Again, one other one of our goals is to talk about our new e-learning, next generation e-learning for fleet safety. So here's a couple bullets on our new e-learning explained. It's brand new. How many people on the call have assigned a training course to an individual, found out they either had a cheat sheet or they come and say, hey, you know what, Bob, this training course is you know, great if this was 1999, it's 2016, it's an outdated course. It doesn't waste your time. The cognitive load theory asserts that a learner can only process information for a limited amount of time. So the old way of learning was sitting a driver down in front of a course that's 30 plus minutes long. Today, the courses are 15, 20 minutes, very topically focused, eliminating non-pertinent uh, content. Hello, HTML5. We get rid of that entirely flash compatibility issues. In fact, just last week, the e-learning offering of a major competitor of ours was down for the bulk of a week as a direct result of Adobe issuing an update to Flash. HTML5 is built for a modern, secure browser, and it allows for the browser of choice. Flash significantly falls short. We've got over 100 years combined of experience poured into this new e-learning in regards to instructional design. We've got a whole team that works on this day in, day out. And then lastly, our database-driven content engine. Dynamically driven content updates, maintenance, and customization. Again, you never need to worry about the difficulties of the past when an update needs to be made. Now, if we talk about database-driven content and updates, we also talk about customizability. It's truly not for a giant organization anymore. What can be customized? Anything. We can make it your branding, your logos, your text, pictures, videos, even test questions. Again, you want statistics for your own organization, things that people are going to pick up on. Or we can build a course 100% from scratch. Now, e-learning is coming down the pipe. On-demand is the future of learning. Know how you need it, when you need it, delivered where you need it. Again, studies have found and research has found that shorter training leads to deeper dives. In other words, a micro learning session promotes longer learning sessions. You tell a quick story and people are eager to learn more. They want to take their own deeper dive, not just what they've been prescribed. And then lastly, a new studio. So Drivers Alert has launched a major initiative to produce micro learning videos. And we could even produce a custom video in our green room for your company. Now, training's all about prevention. And here's ways to employ e-learning in today's fleet. Four main ways. New hire orientation. Continuous improvement training or refresher at either a regular interval or on demand. Any kind of corrective action training after you go through a coaching and counseling session with a driver. And I'm sure most organizations here employ some sort of toolbox meeting. Incorporate a quick five to 12 minute e-learning presentation in that toolbox meeting weekly. Now, how do you close the loop on driver improvement? The goal here should always be corrective action. A few steps is identifying and documenting an unsafe driver and behaviors isn't enough. You truly need to coach and counsel an employee which should reinforce your training message, your policies, your procedures, and your goals. Assign training such as e-learning. Again, you want to deliver that consistent message over and over. And then once you've done this, return a safe driver to the road. 
Now, not only does closing the loop reduce an accident, it also reduces employee turnover because it demonstrates from management your commitment to employee safety and development. It truly shows you're investing in your employee's professional development. So we pull it all together. Um, we've talked about why e-learning is essential for fleets, the cost of safety, what's new about today's e-learning, what we've learned over the last 27 years, an introduction to our new e-learning, but we all have the same goal in mind, wreck fewer vehicles with hurting fewer people. Now what I'd like to do is open it up for questions and we already have a couple coming in here. When we're done with this, uh, we're gonna conduct a short demonstration of our new e-learning. And one of the questions is, are your current clients that are using driver's alert, let's see, charging their drivers for preventable accidents? Can you share amounts being charged? No need to share names um, or who is doing this. That's a great question. So today, and again, not sharing names, we do have uh, a multitude of customers. Uh, I think we've got 1,500 plus today, a few hundred thousand vehicles and drivers represented in our organization. We have the uh, ability to look at trends, uh, accidents, et cetera. But as today, um, we actually do not um, share information like that. You know, we get information from customers in regards to what they're doing. Um, we don't even generalize that information. It is a little sensitive. Um, another question that came in was, does this work with LMSs? Absolutely. All of our courses are de uh, developed with SCORM conformancy, which allows for us to host the training course, deliver it on our LMS, or deliver it on your LMS as well. As long as it's SCORM conforming, any modern LMS should have that uh, capability, and our courses can be delivered, customized, and passed through to there. There's a question, does this work with ELDs? And I'm guessing it's electronic uh, log recorders or electronic data recorders. As long as that tablet in the vehicle uh, has internet access and a modern browser, yes. Let's see, another, course, uh, another question came up is, how long is your average course? Anywhere between 12 and 25 minutes, depending on if it's a corrective action or a proactive training course. It's like another one here, what types of courses do you offer? So obviously Drivers Alert has been a driver safety organization for the past 27, almost 28 years now, as we're coming up on our anniversary. So we certainly offer driver safety courses, but we offer courses in other topics as well, such as workplace safety, health and wellness, and leadership skills. And again, if there's a course that we have, we can customize it. If there's something you're looking for, it can also be created from scratch as well. Are there any other questions from anybody on the uh, panel today? Okay, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna jump in and show a, a quick couple minutes of a training course. So as we look at the training, each of our training courses are designed in the same learning flow or fashion. There's a quick introduction, there's a welcome, there's learning objectives, because again, as adult learners, we wanna know what we are going to learn, how it's going to be presented. There's some content. There's a learning activity to make sure that I'm engaged more content, we rinse and repeat that a few times, and then between 12 and 15 minutes later, 25 minutes later, you're gonna get a summary, so we're gonna tell you what we've told you, and that'll prepare you again for the knowledge retention quiz at the end. So again, we'll preview a couple minutes of a course, and then I'm gonna fast forward through a learning activity, and we'll see that in real time. The only thing worse than being rear-ended is making a mistake and rear-ending someone else. Rear-end collisions are very common, yet so easy to avoid. 
Welcome to our course on avoiding rear-end collisions. When you complete the course, you will be able to describe how rear-end collisions happen and take steps to avoid a rear-end collision. Let's get started. Now, I'm going to fast forward to our learning activity here, but again, we've got more course content. And as I go here, I want to drag the appropriate phrase to each sentence to learn more. So again, with my audio being muted, I want to make sure the blank are in proper working order. We'll just say brake lights and signals as a correct answer. If I were to unmute my computer, you'd know the audio is now narrating a couple of different lines about making sure brake lights and signals are in proper working order and why you'd want to do so. For a vehicle to properly stop, I know the correct answer, but I'd like to put an incorrect answer in, which I'll say is four-way hazard lights. Again, the question shakes, and I get that narration again telling me I've input the wrong answer and to try again. Some more information about our training courses are every training course we have can be paused or resumed at the trainer's wish. If they have to leave the training course, they can pause it, be bookmarked, come back. If they need to pause it to run somewhere around the office or to do something else, they certainly can. Now, again, we talked about instructional design and how everyone's different with learning. I have the ability to mute a training course, and I can view the full text of the course, or I could have the course play out loud and still have the full text here if I want to read and listen to the audio, na audio narration. And we'll just fill in the correct answers here. And again, the course will continue to play. I also have the ability to view the table of contents, and our training can be taken in two different ways. In a linear fashion, so from 1 all the way down to 14, or I can have it where I can open the table of contents up and I can move around and take training as I'd like. But again, I've got to finish all 14 of these before I'm able to take the knowledge retention quiz at the end. And then lastly, when prompted, I have the ability to go to the next set of questions or the next amount of course content or go through the summary. And I can always go back slides that I've already viewed. Now again, the course is still narrating, so I'm unable to go to the next set. But this is just an example of how our courses are laid out, the flow, the interactivities, and then how the navigation here at the bottom works. Now what I'd like to do is, again, one more time, we can open it for questions, and then also have Rich come back on the phone here and uh, talk about his housekeeping items. Are you able to hear me, Paul? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, good. Well, once again, I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us today and uh, your participation. I um, wanted to uh, reiterate that we will be a little bit later this week uh, communicating with everyone and uh, sending a link to a survey just to well, solicit a little feedback on our presentation today. We're always um, interested in, in what you think. and kind of where the trends are going and what we can do to help uh, continue to improve uh, driver safety. And uh, we'll also be introducing a new customer referral program that will provide some incentive for spreading that word and helping us on our mission to, again, uh, you know, wreck fewer vehicles and uh, you know, injure fewer people, which is really our mantra. But also I want to go over to the, uh, the winner of $25 Starbucks gift card. And that lucky individual is Ken Hoffman at Arctic Glacier. That's Ken Hoffman at Arctic Glacier. So congratulations to Ken. He wins a Starbucks gift card. Ken, we will be sending you uh, that gift card very shortly. So again, appreciate everybody's uh, participation. And, and I'll turn it back to Paul. Sure. And got a couple questions here. How often do you update the courses? Great question. Since we own the courses, we own the content, they are regularly updated. Now, laws don't change very often, but the messaging does. The courses get stagnant from any provider. So we regularly update courses 
quarter by quarter. And that's not to say that we're going to take our entire library of over 100 courses and do a complete overhaul and update them, but they're regularly updated, especially, again, we look at statistics on which courses are taken the most. We take that into account and we update those courses. Another question, if a driver can access the courses, will I be notified when they're complete? So today, what we do is we notify you if a driver is assigned a training course that does not take the training courses in a timely fashion. You can give them X amount of time to take the training. If they don't take it, an email goes out to whomever assigned them a training course. But as for proactivity notices of an employee taking training, they have the ability to print out a training certificate. You can always go back and get that information on our website through our LMS. Another question, do you offer a demo of the safety courses? Absolutely, what I can do is follow up with you after the presentation. We can get you access to our uh, website in a uh, preview fashion, and you can actually take any of the training courses that we have. Another is, are we offering e-learning courses in Spanish? Yes, they are some courses in Spanish, um, some of the more corrective action training, and we are adding more uh, each month. One thing is if you have a specific need for a training course in Spanish, we can talk offline and we can get that, uh, you know, taken into consideration, put on a development cycle, et cetera. Uh, is there a certificate of completion for each course that can be printed and added to an employee file? Very easy question. Absolutely. It can be held electronically if you don't want to print it. If you'd like to print it, you certainly can and put it in an employee's file. Are there any other questions before we end this uh, session? I know we're just bumping up against our half an hour. So do we offer pre-trip training? We have the ability to uh, assign a whole host of DOT compliance courses. And within the DOT compliance courses, um, there are some uh, pre-trip inspection uh, topics. It's not just a training course on pre-trip, but some of the DOT courses do offer that. And again, if there are questions that don't get asked, please, by all means, don't hesitate to ever reach out to us at uh, the phone number here or our email, and one of our team members will be happy to assist you in any which way they possibly can. So Rich, I think that's going to be it for the 4 p.m. Eastern session. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and be safe.